Hi guys, so in this particular video, I wanted to talk about my experiences with the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now this is the Exynos version, so the version we have here in Europe. Now I bought this on day one, release date here I think was the 20th of April. So I've had it now and used it for almost a month. And I just wanted to, this isn't going to be a full review, just to let you know my thoughts on it and what I think about this phone overall. But I can say now in the start of the video that just don't believe the hype from those reviewers that are saying that this is the best device ever. Android's best phone of the year 2017. That for me is quite a claim because Every phone has its flaws. I've never found the perfect phone. So you could say I'm a bit of a Samsung fanboy. I've owned every single Galaxy phone of theirs, apart from the ill-fated Galaxy Note 5. Luckily enough, I knew something was up with that one, so I didn't end up buying that. Now here is my Samsung Galaxy S7. This is my Samsung Galaxy S6 uh, Edge Plus, one of my favorites. I really enjoyed this phone and the Samsung Galaxy S, Edge. So I went from the Edge to the S Plus, then to the S7, and I do have older devices, but I sold a lot of them on. So first up, I wanted to talk about the screen. I find the screen, for me personally, isn't any better than the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus's screen, or my favorite, which is the S7 screen. Now this S7 screen, I never had any of those issues like I did straight out of the box, with my Samsung Galaxy S8, I encountered that red tint issue. And you can probably see I still have a slight tint of it at the moment. Now under the settings menu, you can tweak back the red on it. And I've just all left everything as default. So it's a little hard to pick up on now, but maybe you can see compared to, if you have a look at the white there with the Gmail icon and the Play Store icon. Yeah, it's really hard to distinguish now, but it was there and showing its face in the beginning, which I really was disgusted at because I paid 808 euros for this phone and straight away I was like, oh. Now to talk about the aspect ratios here, I find that this aspect ratio is a bit of a con. Um, first off, I can't even remember what the stupid aspect ratio is, but we've lost those hardware navigation keys, which really I love and I don't know why a lot of people aren't complaining about this because I really love the fact that I've got hardware navigation keys, hardware home button and the fingerprint reader is in the proper location on my S7. So we ended up losing the fingerprint reader here and okay we've got this longer screen but it doesn't make the screen really any better to me because okay we got up here we have to swipe down we get notifications. It's not really giving us any more practical space and okay, when you look at content, like a photo that you've taken, you can stretch it right out. Then you get to see the whole screen in use. But really, it is quite a gimmick, I feel. And then, of course, with the edges, you see a lot of this color banding, what happens on the edges. When I was used to that on the Samsung Galaxy S7 edge that I had, but I returned it just for the cheaper Samsung Galaxy S7 because I felt that the edges was a bit of a gimmick, um, even though I do, must admit, I do like it on the S6 Edge Plus. I just found that it was a nice little touch there and I have really enjoyed using this mobile, which I retired for my S7. Just so you know, that was the software update that I got. This is the one to improve the color optimization and the adjustment there, AKA the red tint fix. Now, one of the most stupidest things about the display that I learned straight away and from some of the reviews that at the moment, well, when you get it, it's only running in 1080p by default, which I believe to be the hugest mistake that Samsung has ever made. It's so stupid. They've done this to save on battery life, I think, so you can get longer performance, but I'll talk about battery life soon. The thing that's so annoying about it for me is it's like buying a 4K monitor and then only running it in 1080p the whole time playing games in 1080p even though you've got a 4K monitor. You just don't do it, it's just stupid, it's pointless. So here you can see the screen mode, if I go over now into basic, you can correct. We can see the tint there in basic, now it looks a little bit red. You've got the adaptive mode, but I normally just leave it on the adaptive display, that's the default setting. But then you can adjust the color balance here. So actually I've turned the red all the way down, so you can see. Now if I keep it to where it was by default, I think it's right up here. 
now you can see that red tint. So I apologize in the beginning of the video I said that no I had left it by default. I forgot I did that. It's to correct the redness in the screen which is a little hard for me to capture on film but so far yes an overrated screen I believe. I think my S7 screen is just so much better. It really is. It just to me looks better all round better better colors it's just sharper it just hopefully you can see that but if I go back into the menu there you can see and see that lag just happen then that's quite common Bixby I mean I, I joke around and call touch whiz, I call it touch lag because it does lag a little bit and the same thing is disappointingly happening on my S8 I thought Bixby was supposed to stop now. Now I put it in that high performance mode. You can see here, high performance mode is selected. I keep it on that because I don't want to see those lags. But I remember when I first got this out of the box, straight away I thought, yeah, the screen looks good, but it didn't impress me like the Xiaomi Mi Mix screen did. But the first thing I did is went back into recent apps and I saw this lag and I went home and I went over going first time going up like this to look at my apps and there was this stutter and this lag. And I just thought to myself, Samsung, why do we still have lag in your UI? It's really so disappointing to see. And when we look at the overall design compared to the previous generation, it really has not advanced that much to me at all. Okay, now we have Type-C port on the bottom instead of uh, the micro USB 2 port. That's great. But overall, the loudspeaker is very similar, maybe a little bit louder. And the camera quality is really the same. I can hardly see any difference. Like you could get out, maybe pixel peepers might be able to tell a little bit of a difference between it. But what I do like with the camera is it now has, of course, electronic image stabilization, which really does help out and make my 4K video a little bit more stable because you only get that on 1080p video on the S7. So the camera really, their performance, the improvement only comes from video, I believe. And that is it. Of course, you've got that fingerprint reader in the odd location. Now, I don't use the fingerprint reader most of the time because, yes, I keep putting my finger on the camera. I know a lot of people ranting on about that. It is in the wrong location, and I'm sure that the S9 will put it under the screen or something like that but uh, the iris unlocking I do use that now it does work well when you're in the shadow and at night it works good but when it doesn't work well is when your face is in bright light it sometimes struggles there with the unlock and I find it's just easier to key in my pin number instead of using that so the overall design isn't really that much of a step up I believe it is very nice don't get me wrong it is a great phone. I'm not hating on the phone. It is a good phone, but it's not the best. And you'll notice too on the back, first thing as well that I noticed when I got it, it sounds a little hollow around this area. Whereas on the S7, not as much there. But still, very decent build. No problems with that. Good to see they still have micro SD card support. I was really worried they were going to drop that. So very good. But overall, yeah, the build is flagship spec. It's nice. It's slippery. And already I have some fine scratches on the screen. But that just seems to be the characteristics of the new Gorilla Glass 5. Now, this is probably the best part or the most fun I've had with this phone is the augmented reality that's built into the camera application. I had a lot of fun with my three-year-old daughter. You can see her first time using it here. So if you have children, they're going to absolutely love that. And she keeps asking me to turn on the camera so she can try out the, the carrot eating rabbit one that there is. It's just a little bit of fun. So that's about the best enjoyment I've had out of the S8, sadly, so far in my time using it in almost a month. So, okay, when you run benchmarks, they come out a lot higher on the S8 because it has a newer, faster chip. Now, I don't notice really any difference when it comes to the UI performance between these two. Where you do notice that it's a little more fluid is the gaming. You can see the 3D scores, it's almost double on the, the S8. So the S8, I find gaming is just maybe a tiny bit more smoother. But really between the two, when you have them side by side, it's 
hard to see. This plays games really well, the S7 still. And of course, both of them, they handle gaming just fine there. So it's only when you run these synthetic benchmarks can you see a real big difference to them. But in the general day-to-day -day use, in the operating system and everything, you can see then, wow, Bixby went back to the front menu a little bit quicker. But really, the performance of both of them is about the same there in just general use, unless you're running benchmarks. So onto battery life here. This is one area where I'm again disappointed with the S8. I expected that I'll be able to make a full two days. Now I just can't. Here you can see I'm 33 hours in and I have 25% battery. Now it's calculating I've got about eight hours left, but I don't like to get the battery right down. I want to keep it at least over 15%. So every night I have to lie this down on the wireless charger and charge it up. So I know that I'm gonna be good for the next day. It's about on par with my Samsung Galaxy S7 and other devices that I have. Of course, the Snapdragon 625 devices get like four days for me. And really, you can see the screen on time that I got here. That's This is my own personal use where I'm able to get on other devices around three days. Our screen on time wasn't a lot. You can see I'm not a heavy user, but I do keep data enabled and wireless on most of the time so I can get my WhatsApp messages and... This is where I find it a little disappointing. If I could get two days and have to charge it just every two days, I would be quite happy. And maybe I was expecting a little bit too much from a flagship CPU, but even so, yeah, battery life, I wouldn't state that it is amazing. I would say for the chipset it has, it is good, but in my own personal case, still means I need to charge it every single night. So to quickly recap here, my thoughts on the S8. It is a good phone, but it's certainly not Android's best phone of 2017. Don't believe the hype. I mean, a lot of these reviewers, these so-called big top tech reviewers, I believe they got free review units. So they have to give it a glowing positive review. Otherwise they don't get it. This Samsung Galaxy S9 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 when it comes out. So there's a lot of that going on behind the scenes. Why I should have returned this in the beginning as well, because of the screen tint issue. But like a fool, I decided, no, I'll let Samsung fix it. And really, you can see some of that tint still if you look closely between the icons where the white is on the Play Store and around the Gmail, as mentioned. You can see it just a little bit. So the build quality, I think, has not really evolved at all. In fact, for me, it's a step backwards. We've got a gimmicky aspect ratio. We've lost our hard screen navigation buttons. We've got a 1440p screen that by default is only going to run at 1080p, which is so stupid. Like I said in the beginning too, it's like buying a 4K monitor and then only playing 1080p games on it. You just don't really do it. What's the point of buying 4K? It's like, what's the point of having a 1440p screen if you don't run it in that? Which is why, of course, I'm running the high performance mode because I want the 1440p panel that I paid for. And yeah, I don't really have it. So cameras, both of these, the S7 and the S8 cameras, they to me take identical still images. It's so hard to distinguish the difference between them. Maybe slightly better on the S8 in low light, but really again, so hard to tell. Where the S8 is better, is the video performance because now in 4k we've got that electronic image stabilization and the battery life to me both of these are about the same and we still have those disappointing little stutters and lag here and there in the ui which i thought would be finally killed off with bixby and samsung trying to get rid of that lag associated with TouchWiz. so all in all I don't know whether I'm going to keep the S8, to be honest. I think I might just go back to my Samsung Galaxy S7 because it's just not an improvement enough for me to want to keep this, especially when I can probably sell this and still get around 700 euros for it, losing about 100. So, thank you so much for watching my thoughts here on the S8. And just don't believe everything you see. I don't see how people can do full reviews of these phones after only literally owning it for two days and saying it's the most amazing phone in the world, which clearly to me, it isn't.